Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys in California. Before I begin, give all praise to the Most High Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledge with Yahweh Shai. I pray the Most High blesses this lesson this evening. Gives more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past. In order to understand events that are currently happening on the earth. So we get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. As you can see, you know, still a lot of false stories coming out. Oh, we got all these EAM messages. Oh, man, we don't know what's going to happen. War is at the doorstep. You better get ready. They might not have a midterm elections. They might have something else where they don't even let you have the midterms where they just, you know, take over and, and don't allow you to vote or anything like that. So you have to keep on using that fear in order to keep you from chasing after this truth. And you got to understand, even with this whole situation with Kyrie, even a little bit with Kanye, you know, they've always, you know, had their times where they would say a little bit of truth and then everyone would fall back into status quo all the time. Okay. And there's nothing new, you know, they've just used different, they just use different celebrities and we've done seen this many times. Oh, they know who we are. They, they found the truth. And it's like, Hey man, don't, don't be jumping to the conclusion so fast. Okay, many people know the truth. Many people are aware of the truth. Okay? Now, you got to understand that the other nations, they are totally aware of this awakening. And they are trying to sidetrack it. They're trying to keep us, you know, from going deeper. You know, I've noticed, like I said, that they kind of talked about, it's always about Africa, Africa, Africa. OK, remember, they always allow us to think that we're from Africa. You could talk about the white man. You could talk about whatever you want, as long as you think that you're from Africa. And they even did this right now with this truth. You think that it was just a coincidence that Kyrie picked this movie to uh, to tweet to, uh, you know, to put out there, you know, We've come up, the Most High has given us so much new information about the Americas. And even, you know, Kyrie admitted that he was a native, an aborigine. But he tweeted a movie that talks about us coming from Africa. Which then gets everyone to go out and look at a, a movie or a book that has our origin, you know, our origins in Africa. They're always trying to separate us from our lands. Nothing, that's nothing new. That's something that's been very consistent. You can know a little something. They say, oh, you're, you know, you're, you guys are part of the, those, those African uh, tribes over there that are, you know, that are also following, you know, the Hebrew customs. That's where you come from. They're always trying to tell you where you come from. And any information that goes along with that agenda They'll let that out because it's always about hiding information and hiding the truth. And they're definitely going to use our people, you know, because, you know, it, it, we're at the point now where we're not really listening to pretty much anything that the Gentiles are saying. We're not trying to hear. We're not trying to hear that. Not trying to hear their breakdowns. Not trying to hear what they think. But they're still going to use their donkeys. They're still going to use the ones that they control in order to try to keep you away from your heritage. Now, we know that we have even more heritage than what they're showing us. The Most High is showing us about the interiors, you know, of the earth. And we're going to get into that also tonight. You gotta understand, every time the Most High gives us more information, that's when things seem to speed up. And, you know, 
kind of got a little sidetracked, but that's on purpose. They, get, they try to put side, they try to sidetrack this new information, but they do that on purpose. And they're definitely going to use the ones that they control. You know, I said nothing, nothing new, nothing new. Remember growing up, I used to love listening to X Clan. They would always be talking. You know, they'd be talking about the so-called white man or whatever else. But they also had us, all, our origins are over in Africa, right? All the time. We're African. We're African. We're African. Get those little medallions with Africa, with African colors and everything else. Because they're always trying to connect us to another land, which then, you know, it pretty much just gives more credence to their agenda and trying to show us that we were never here. We were not the original peoples of this land. We have no connections to this land. And that we, our history is in Africa, even though they can't tell us anything about our history over there either. So they were set up, you know, brothers, you know, to push the whole Africa agenda. And now it's kind of funny that the same thing is happening even at this late of a date. We were worldwide. They are the ones that are going out of their way to try to pigeonhole us into one very small area of this world. But as we've been, the Most High has been showing us that we were everywhere. And see, they can't explain that. So therefore, they just try to just put us in one little area, say, oh yeah, you guys are the Hebrews, but you're, you know, you're connected with these African tribes. That's where you guys come from. These, those are your lands over there. And leave everything else to us. That's why their prophecy, and that's why they're still trying to push their prophecies. And everything that they've told us is an absolute lie. So just have to understand that. Now we're going to check out some information right here. Now see, the hollow earth. What you got to understand is that the higher ups are totally aware of this information. The higher ups are totally aware of what is at these at the poles at the uh, North and South Pole, which really, there really isn't a pole, but we'll get into that all later on. But there's all this information that's coming out that's showing you that there's way more going on and the whole world has been confederate to not let you get this information. So letting you argue over Africa, letting you argue, argue about just America, when there's also more land mass, as they talked about, and this hollow earth than what is actually here on the surface. Does this have to something to do with, you know, how they're, they're hiding underground and the most high sends the Israelites to go and, and dig them out and get them out from underground. How the other nations are like, you know, fall on us, telling the rocks and everything to fall on us. Is it because they've, you know, they've, they've discovered, these entrances, and that's where they're running to. They always want to make it seem like they got these bunkers that they built. Why build bunkers when there's already handmade bunkers, you know, all over the world? When there's already information, you know, they got information now about how to get to these places. Is that where they're running to? You remember, like, when you watched the movie uh, 2012, and not until the end, you know, we thought they were trying to fly to another planet, right? But all they did was they were they built arcs, which were just ships, and they placed them at the top of a of a mountain and tried to you know save themselves that way. You know it's like, so they know that the end is coming. They're trying to hide. They're they're going to go to something that's already built. They're going to try to hide in these in this hollow earth. You know, but the whole time in the movie, we were thinking that they were building rockets and they were all trying to fly away. And, and even today, oh, we're going to try to go to Mars. We're going to try to go here. Is that what they're really trying to do? Or are they trying to just set up place, set up camp in the hollow earth? You see, so like I said, there's a lot more going on than meets the eye. I'm going to read a little bit here from the middle. Okay says, it is strange that Reed's and, Gardner, uh, Reed's and Gardner's books, which presented such an epic-making geographical theory, 
uh, which they supported by the evidence of Arctic exploration during the past century, a theory comparable in importance to the theory that the Earth is round when it was first proposed. Okay, it should have been so disregarded or were they suppressed? You know, they gave all this information to prove that the Earth was hollow. And very few people even you know, have read these books. So that today they are unavailable and very rare. It was the author's good fortune to secure a copy of Gardner's book from a book dealer handling rare books. Is it possible that these books shared the fate of the news about Admiral Byrd's discoveries? Giannini's a book and Palmer's magazine announcing Byrd's conf confirmation of Reed's and Gardner's theory of a hollow earth with openings at the poles, a correspondent of the author's uh, living in Washington, D.C., wrote that he happened to look through the books in the library of a high official of the Air Force with whom he had business, and much to his surprise, he saw a copy of Gardner's book. Evidently, Gardner's theory of a hollow earth is not unknown to government and military leaders in view of Admiral Byrd having confirmed it, but it is hushed up and not openly discussed. Now you see, we start getting this kind of information and this kind of understanding and many in the higher, you know, higher ranks already know about this, but it's all hushed information. So it would make sense that once we start to look into this, but all of a sudden it's like, okay, all right, you know what? They're starting to figure out the most highs, you know, giving them information about, you know, these lands inside of the earth. You know what? It's okay. Just admit that, that they're the Hebrews. That's fine. But still but revert them back to Africa. Revert, revert them back to Africa again. So that they know, you know, yeah, they, they can be the Hebrews, whatever. That's fine. You know, they're going to figure, they're going to figure stuff out eventually, but let's slow them down by making them regress and go back to, you know, Africa, 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 once again. There's so much information out here that confirms that the Hebrews were here in the Americas. So why push a book that's going to pretty much take you all the way back to, you know, the beginnings of our, you know, our, our walk? When we first got into this, that's what was pushed. And that's what most of us believed. But see, these higher ups know about this hollow earth. They have books on it. They have information, I'm sure it's, you know, that's kept from the public that we've never seen. Now you start to think about what information are they supposedly hiding under the Vatican? What information are they supposedly hiding in all these different places? See, they make it sound like it's only just religious books. Why wouldn't it be books about the hollow earth? Information about what they've seen, what they've found, civilizations, civilizations they've come into contact with, technology that they've come... Why would not those kinds of things be put in there and hidden from the public as well? Always got to look at the motivation of this, why these other nations are you know, giving you certain information. That, I mean, like I said, that's, that's Hebrew 101 about us being Hebrew Israelites, us going through the curses, but then trying to push us all to say that we all came from Africa and we all came over on slave ships. You know, that's where, you know, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of growth that's been happening here in the last, you know, few years. So again, it says, and to his surprise, he saw a copy of Gardner's book. Evidently, Gardner's theory of a hollow earth is not unknown to government and military leaders in view of Admiral Byrd having confirmed it. But it is hushed up and not openly discussed. Just like uh, who we are. They all know, but it's just hushed up, hushed up and not openly discussed. Just like when you have your conversations with people and you start breaking things down and they just give you that look because their spirit already knows the truth. I'll check this out. Fitch, a Fitch asks those who do not believe that the earth is hollow with openings at the poles to answer the following questions. So then they start asking them questions. Because you got people who can be like, oh, that's not true. That's crazy. Well, he's got questions for them. Can you produce proof that any explorer reached the so-called North or South Pole? If there is no such thing as an 83 to 90 degrees latitude on the Earth, then how can one reach or fly over the North Pole? If the Earth is not hollow, then why does the North Wind and the uh, Arctic 
get warmer as one sails north beyond 70 degrees latitude. Why are there warm northerly winds and an open sea for hundreds of miles north of 82 degrees latitude? After 82 degrees latitude is reached, why is the needle of a compass always agitated, restless, and bulky? If the earth is not hollow, then why do the warm northerly winds mentioned above carry more dust than any wind on earth? See, these people are all, and these, these, other, these higher ups that have these books are all aware of this information, and they cannot answer these questions outside of there being a hollow earth. If no rivers are flowing from the inside to the outside, then why are all of the icebergs composed, okay, of fresh water? Yeah, where's all this water coming from? Why does one find tropical seeds, plants, and trees floating in the fresh water of these icebergs? See, a lot of things we haven't even seen, not even heard of. Tropical seeds, plants, and, and trees floating in the fresh water of these icebergs? Come on now. If not all the freshwater icebergs positively, okay, do not come from any place on Earth, as would be impossible unless we assume the existence of rivers flowing from the inside to the outside, then where do they come from? There was a guy who actually lived in these areas, and he uh, was there for like a year. And I think he said he like measured like there's only like two inches of rain the whole year. Not, not enough to, uh, you know form all these icebergs okay why does the wind from the north carry more pollen and blossoms than any wind on the exterior if it is not hollow and warm inside the earth then why does a uh, colored pollen color the snow for thousands of square miles could it be that the pollen from millions of acres and colored flowers causes the snow to be red pink yellow, blue, and etc. See, this is the sum of the information. There's more. But like I said, as we get more of this understanding, more of this information, this is where, you know, the, as they've already worked so hard to come together, remember, you're not allowed to fly. You're not allowed to travel you know, the Antarctic. I don't know what goes on in the north, but, you know, but they've all come together and don't allow anyone to even go in these areas. And they all, you know, as much as they fight over everything, but but that they're all Confederate. That's Psalms eighty three to the key, to the core, right there. Okay. I'll check this part out. Let me check out this Ross Ice Shelf, Antarctica. Okay, this is that huge like ice barrier reef, a huge a huge ice barrier. Okay, they call it the rice of the sorry the Ross Ice Shelf. It is kind of showing you like how big the river has to be that formed this ice shelf, this great barrier. Okay. Now it says now it would be impossible for this iceberg. Hold on here. Let's start a little bit higher. So it says. There was less than two inches of rainfall in 11 and one half months. And while it snowed quite frequently, it never fell to any great depth. Under such conditions, where would materials be found to produce an iceberg? Yet the greatest one on the earth is there. Okay. There in, I say in Antarctica. Okay. One so large that it is called the great ice barrier rather than the ice, rather than an iceberg being over 400 miles long and 50 miles wide. It is grounded in 2,100 feet of water and extends from 80 to 200 feet above water, read comments. Now it would be impossible for the iceberg to form in a country having practically no rain or snow. As icebergs are made from frozen water and there is no water to freeze, it evidently was formed at some place other than where it is now. Okay, where it now is. The iceberg itself being a freshwater, being a freshwater 
lies in an ocean of salt water. It's like the Most High left all of these clues so that as we awaken, there will be all these clues that are going to lead us back to our homeland. Because remember, in these areas, in these cities, you know, all of the different um, societies, a lot of these different religions have names for this area, for this, you know, this hollow earth. And the Hebrews called it the land of Canaan. So think of this. They said that our people, you know, were walking around for 40 years from Egypt to Canaan, some little itty bitty, you know, land. You know, a little bit of a spot of land over there in the so-called Middle East for 40 years. Now, if America is Egypt, okay, and we were enslaved over this way, and then we got freed, and then we got we had to go to Canaan, maybe did we have to go inland? Did we have to go into the hollow earth? Did we walk there? Is that maybe why it took us 40 years? Because of the distance that we had to go? You know, I said, so if they, they're calling, you know, these lands in the hollow earth, Canaan, because there was such, there, there, there's, there are so much more um, fruitful, you know, than the lands here on the surface. They're so much more enriched. They're so much better than the lands here. Was that where we were going? Quite possibly. Okay. But I just think these, the most eyes just left these huge clues. <clears throat> like none, none, none bigger than this iceberg. The iceberg itself, being a fresh water, lies in an ocean of salt water. But just we just never thought of this stuff, you know. And as we think about these kinds of things, then all of a sudden it makes the Gentiles have to do bigger things. Like, you know, they have to do things to take us off of our game, take us off, you know, of the track of finding our way back to the Father. That's why all of a sudden, you know, they would never go out of their way to talk about how we're the Hebrews. They would never bring that kind of attention to this subject. But now that we're getting closer to the truth, they have to start giving us more and more information. Even if it is to just, you know, pretty much get us off of our game. But they still gotta, they'll, they'll still do that. Just like, hey, as we get more of this information and understanding, then maybe all of a sudden the Gentiles will start actually following through with their threats following through and starting to fight with each other. Because like we, like we said, our um, power, you know, and our battle is not carnal. It's spiritual. So as we get closer to the Father, physically and spiritually, it makes the other nations have to do more drastic, measure, keep, drastic measures to keep us from chasing the Father. It says, how do I know that the great ice barrier came from the interior of the earth or from the kind of river described? First, it cannot come from the exterior of the earth since icebergs are not formed there. That river must have been 2,500 feet deep, 50 miles across, and from four to 500 miles long. For these are the the present dimensions of the iceberg. The river had to be straight or the iceberg could not pass, uh, pass out without breaking. It passed through a comparatively level country because the surface is still flat. Another proof that the interior of the earth is level, okay, near the uh, Antarctic entrance, is that many of the icebergs found in the Antarctic are long and slim. They are called ice tongues, which indicates that they, uh, they came out of rivers running nearly on a level. The icebergs found in the Arctic, on the other hand, are more chunky, indicating that they come from a more mountainous country, where the fall of streams is more abrupt, causing the icebergs to be shorter and thicker. So it's kind of, you know, hey, you got this big, great barrier, you know, ice iceberg right here how did it get there so it had to be formed in a river that was comparable size you know because if it was smaller it would have broken up and things like that he said just things to think about got this i mean it's just a huge iceberg and you're surrounded by salt water it doesn't rain that much it doesn't snow that much so there's no other explanation you know to show how this how this this great ice barrier got here 
You see what I'm saying? So as you can see, the Most High, just like Pro uh, Proverbs 25 and 2, you know, he hides things. He puts his information there. But if you're worried about all these other things, you'll never look at this. If you're worried about, you know, hey, uh, you know, what's going on here with Kyrie? Hey, what's going on here with Kanye? Okay, what's going on here with the Lakers? Okay, oh, what's going on here with the Clippers? You know, oh, what's going on with this or my football team? You'll never figure any of this out because you're too busy worrying about the things here, which is what the other nations want because then it just prolongs their time and, you know, in these positions. But I want to be restored. I want the Most High to restore us as a people. That's what I pray for all the time. You know? So like I said, you start looking at the size of this iceberg. That's pretty much what it is. A huge iceberg that there's no way that it could have been, you know, formed without it coming from, you know, inside the hollow earth. Is it not absolutely amazing to see how the Most High is working? So as we bring out more of this information, start to expect bigger events from the other nations because now they're being backed into a corner. They're like, man, we've had all these books. We've hidden all this information. We told, man, we told them that they're Hebrews, okay? You guys should be happy. All right, we are, all right man, we told y'all y'all from Africa and y'all are the Hebrews, okay? You know, but it's like, nah, I said, you guys lie about too much. I'm going to have to read some more stuff. Oh, come on, man. You know, I gave, hey, you, you should be happy. You're God's chosen people. You're from Africa. That's all you need to know. You don't, don't read any more than these 66 books. That's all you need to know. It shows you how big this is. You know, like I said, you start asking them questions and starting to explain things, they're not going to be able to. Try to explain this right here, they're not going to be able to. It shows you how grand the Most High is. And he's left all these clues for us everywhere. And, I, and, that's, and then this information right now is just the tip of the iceberg. There's way more coming. You know, just like this right here, Morales right here, just talking about how, the, you know, it's like the sun, the, the sun is inside of the earth. You know, it's, it's the light coming off of the, you know, the sun is inside the earth. You know, the other nations will try to find some other way to explain everything, because they always do. Because that's what they always do. That's what they're set up to do. To come up with their own explanations for everything. But once you stop listening to them, then you're going to be dependent on the Most High to start to give us this information and give us this understanding. And you'll stop depending upon your enemies and needing their validation for it, for anything. All praise, it's the most high, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement, Yahweh Shai. Shalom. 